Okay, well, thank you for such a lovely and warm welcome, Allie. You're just such a special person. And Aaron, such a special person. Together, um, they are just amazing. So what a team. Uh, thank you so much. I love doing these uh, with Imagery Born and, and these two wonderful women and all of you. So mm -hmm. thanks for taking time out of your busy lives um, to join on in. It's so great um, to have you all. And um, it's just wonderful to have our own little community going. So I think it helps to see other faces and other people joining in. So it's just fabulous. And um, it is getting a little darker here in Oregon. I'm in Oregon, Central Oregon. I used to live in Midway. That was my old stomping ground. So uh, lovely to hear about it. Uh, yeah, so tonight we're focusing on healing imagery. So we set up kind of a three part series in a way. We did the first session was um, kind of that basic session on affirmation writing. And I see a lot of familiar faces that attended that and did a fabulous, fabulous job. That was really a, a wonderful uh, session. And now we're gonna move into a second piece, healing imagery. And then in April, we're going to do self-hypnosis. So a nice, easy, quick tool for you to learn um, to do your uh, relaxation on your own. So that's kind of how they build. Um, but I, I do, I will do a refresher on hypnotherapy just to get grounded in that um, for those who, who um, need a refresher or didn't attend before. Um, and a little background on me. So I am a, um, a certified medical support, clinical hypnotherapist, and all that mouthful means is that I've done some extra training in pain management. I'm not clinical, I'm not a doctor. Uh, people that work with me for anything to do with pain or their body or sleep, weight loss, uh, even smoking, anything like that, um, I ask that they get a, a physician approval um, to add hypnotherapy. So that's how that works. I'm not a clinician myself. People that just wanna uh, work on something um, that feels unrelated to a physical ailment, then that's not necessary. Uh, but just to clarify, uh, so that's what's going on there. Uh, so what I would love to do is, is ground you a little bit in the perspective of hypnotherapy from where I'm coming from. Um, there's lots of different trainings out there and um, they're not all the same. So um, for, for my background, what I'm coming from is um, hypnotherapy as a therapeutic modality. Uh, it's really a mind-body re-education. Probably you've heard um, perhaps of rewiring the brain. So that's what we do here with affirmations, which are positive suggestions related to a goal and healing imagery. Those tools help you rewire. Um, so to change habits or distressing emotions that you've been um, carrying around, uh, those tools are helpful. So... Um, yeah, so, and it's integral hypnotherapy. So you're at the center of it. So you as a, a potential hypnotherapy client, let's say, uh, you're the boss, you're in control. I'm here to help you learn how to use your own mind uh, to manage pain, to reduce stress, to let go and work through distressing emotions. You're doing it all. I know how to coach you and guide you, but I just want to emphasize where I'm coming from. I'm not doing anything to you. You're always in control. Uh, this is contrary to Hollywood. They want to make you believe that someone can do whatever they want to you through hypnosis. Um, makes for a fun movie, <laughs> scary movie, disturbing movie, uh, but it has nothing to do with what a professional hypnotherapist does. So I wanted to get that out of the way. Uh, so let me give you a, uh, a really easy visual. I'd like to start right away with imagery. So I'm going to use imagery to explain hypnotherapy. Um, if you wish, it's up to you. If you want to start now, a focusing technique for imagery is to close the eyes. Do what you're comfortable with. And if you're not quite ready to close your eyes, it's okay. Um, maybe pick a spot. Um, that'll help focus the attention because what I'd love you to do is get the image of an iceberg in your mind's eye, okay, an image of an iceberg. So I've never seen one in real life, but I've seen pictures and they look like a mountain that's partly under the sea. So you can see just the tip of the iceberg in the middle of the ocean 
but the big mass, the weight of it that moves the iceberg, you can't see that. It's under the water. So kind of get that visual in your brain, all right? And think of hypnotherapy like this. The tip of the iceberg is your conscious mind. And then everything you can't see, that big mass under the sea that you can't see with your eyes is your subconscious mind. The subconscious mind is where you store your memories and beliefs, creativity, images, behaviors. It's all there moving you through the world, much like it moves an iceberg. Again, the conscious mind that you use every day is the tip. You do your taxes. You decide what you're going to get for dinner that night. You're making either or decisions. Hmm. Salmon or beef? Chicken or vegetarian? So that's conscious mind stuff. Now there's a lot of emotion that goes into food, but you're starting kind of with that conscious mind making logical decisions. So what surrounds the iceberg? Uh, you could imagine your iceberg at nighttime, let's say, and the stars above are twinkling and the oceans rippling below, all that stuff around it. Think of that as the super conscious mind. Now, that super conscious mind um, is really a way to connect to something larger than yourself. You're not alone in the world. Uh, we are in it all together kind of idea. For some people, it feels more spiritual. It might be God for them. Super conscious might be a, a spiritual aspect. For others, atheists can use hypnotherapy too. Agnostics can use hypnotherapy too. They may see that as their higher self. So that super conscious, that surrounding, uh, something bigger uh, could be God, spirit, nature, your higher self. It's really your problem solving ability. Think of it that way. So when you align the tip of the iceberg, uh, the base, the underneath of the iceberg, and everything, the galaxy, the universe around it, when you align those three minds, conscious, subconscious, super conscious, that's when transformation happens. That's what you do, learn to do in uh, hypnotherapy. You learn to align so that you are, you have a lot more power that way can change habits, can let go of distressing emotions. You can let go of things from childhood that may still be holding you back from achieving goals today. That's why hypnotherapy is so powerful because we work with all three of those minds. Now, in particular, we work with the subconscious mind. All right, you can go ahead and open your eyes if you wish and come on back. And um, the subconscious mind is, is pretty powerful, folks. It really is. So. Um, again, it's, it's where we hold our beliefs. So when we believe something and we don't examine it, it can become a truth, whether it's true or not. So kind of keep that in mind. So we might hold very tightly to our beliefs about ourselves, what's possible about the world. Um, and if that's left unexamined, it can become a truth. And that's not always so. So hypnotherapy is really an opportunity to kind of look underneath the ocean, if you will, and um, see what's been moving us, see what our beliefs are. Tonight, we're going to focus on healing imagery. So we're going to focus on imagery that heals. Imagery, um, when I say heal, um, I'm thinking um, things that are good for us, not necessarily strictly healing, like wound healing, um, but healing emotionally, healing spiritually. And yes, people have been known to heal physically uh, by adding hypnotherapy to their, to their treatment plans. So it's pretty powerful. It's why um, I've seen success using it, for example, in weight loss. Um, people may have tried to um, use willpower alone. Think of that as a conscious mind, the tip of the iceberg. Uh, usually takes a very long time or doesn't work. When you start putting your subconscious mind to work for you, that's when a lot of transformation can happen. And then realize you're not, you're not alone. And connecting to that you know, universal consciousness, God, whatever you wish to call it, um, can really help solve problems. So that is a, um, it's a really quick overview, kind of a highlighted overview of hypnotherapy. Um, healing imagery is powerful because um, 
like affirmations, what we tell ourselves and what we see can really affect our day. And it can affect our night too, how we sleep um, and how we go about our lives. So imagery is important because sometimes we don't realize we're showing ourselves negative pictures. So I'll give you a real example. Um, I was seeing um, a young woman. Um, she had several different uh, illnesses going on. And what she did is she found a picture, either stumbled upon it or went looking for it, I'm not sure, of a woman in the Holocaust, kind of around her age and her build. And she had this image in front of her every day and identified with it. That's me, I look like that. That's what I look like. She had lost a tremendous amount of weight uh, due to the illness. And she was quite petite as it was. So um, wanted to address that right away. Wanted to challenge that right away. Um, that's called reification. So what she's doing is she's reinforcing the negative image uh, because it resonates like, oh my God, you know, I'm scared, that's me. Okay, but what is that doing to you here? And how's that affecting your physiology when you tense up as you look at it? We don't want that. We want healing imagery. Go find an image of someone who inspires you. Go find an image of yourself when you were very healthy that you um, remember. And she's like, I know what it is. It's me on a mountain bike. I looked amazing. I was beautiful. My legs were so strong. That one. <laughs> Go get that one. And she did. And it helped a lot. Um, so things like that, that can seem like, gosh, why would you ever do that? Um, but people do. And sometimes they just do it up here. And that can be even more powerful. They might be carrying around images of themselves, um, beliefs about themselves that turn into an image. You want to be real careful what you show yourself, what you pay attention to, what you tell yourself, what you show yourself. It's powerful. So here's what we're going to do tonight. We're going to focus on... Um, some imagery and some, uh, I'm going to use some affirmations too. We won't write them together. I'll run them by you so you hear them first. Um, but the imagery and the, the, the um, affirmations are gonna be around um, self-love and self-worth and appreciating yourself. Would that be okay? Okay, all right, that's where they'll head, all right? And, um, but first we wanna get good at it, right? We wanna work on healing imagery. We wanna get good at visualizing. Um, it's something we do naturally, but it's also a skill you can develop even more. So what I'd love for you to do is um, go, go through this with me, give this a try. This is something I do with clients to help them get in the mode of visualizing, become real good at it. Because in hypnotherapy, you use that. You use that skill all the time, so we want to work on it. So here's what we're going to do to kind of prime the pump and um, get really good at visualizing. So uh, what I'd love for you to do is close your eyes. Close your eyes, just real gentle, and, and kind of get comfy. If you're not real comfortable right now and you feel like, oh, I wish I would have grabbed the other chair or pillow, do it now. Go for it. Get a blanket. Um, as you relax, some people get warmer. Some people, you've got a, uh, Lisa's got a nice blanket already. Um, some people get warmer, some people get colder. So just, you know, it's kind of like going into the mountains, dress in layers. <laughs> so, all right, close your eyes, get comfy. And I'd like for you now to think about a place that's familiar to you, a place that's familiar. It could be a house you grew up in. It could be somewhere you lived for a long time. And I'm gonna pose some questions about it and just answer it in your own head. What kind of place is this? What does it look like? What else are you noticing about it? Is there anything unusual or special about this place? All right, know that there's a difference between visualization from memory and imagination. And in a moment, you're going to experience that for yourself. All right, open, go ahead and open your eyes. All right. Now, 
how was that experience for people? If um, it was very easy, um, maybe just give me a head nod. And if it, if it wasn't that easy, you can, you know, and feel free to unmute too. We don't have to have uh, mute on. You, you have something to share. I'd love to hear it. So um, go ahead if you'd like to. Anybody find that particularly um, easy? Like it just came like instantly. Anybody have that? Al is nodding her head. Lisa, yeah. Some of you are um, are are quite. You've got a mood going. Um, so I can. I don't see you nodding or not. So I'm not. Um, uh, I'm not trying to to uh, skip over Melissa, but you're you're hiding there, and it just it's. <laughs> Mysterious. I'm hiding from my yeah. I'm hiding from my <laughs> children. <laughs> Understood. So I can't all see you as well. But um, anybody find that particularly challenging? This can be. Um, it kind of could go either way. Some people can find this really kind of tough. All right. What is that? What place are we supposed to find? I mean, like an old. You said an old house, or but what was it? What was it supposed to like? What thoughts was it supposed to conjure up? Uh, that was a picture to conjure up, actually, of a um, just a place that was familiar to you, something you know really well, so you can see it easily. Is the okay. idea? Gotcha. Yeah, yeah. So, so, and and here's the contrast. So, um, so go ahead, close your eyes, and this time, picture. So, just conjure up a picture. Uh, um, to use Lori's words, conjure up a picture. Perceive a pleasant, imaginary place. If you like water, go ahead and place this imaginary place near water. If you don't, go somewhere else. You're imagining now, this isn't a place you've ever been to. It's not a real place. So this is a different exercise. Give it a try. You're making it up. It's imaginary. It could be near a lake or stream, the ocean, or in a meadow. It's up to you. Notice what kind of place it is. Notice what it looks like. Notice what it feels like. Notice any smells. Smells are powerful. What's it sound like there? What sounds do you hear? Are there any sounds? Notice if there's anything special or unusual in this imaginary place. All right, come on back, open the eyes. Now, how was that? That was really a brief exercise, but you know, did it feel, feel different, you know? Was it uh, a little bit different experience? Yeah. I think that one felt more freeing. Like in the first one, it was just a place I know. Here I was kind of like imagining things that, you know, maybe couldn't even be real. Like super huge fruits the size of my head. Mm -hmm. Love it. Love it. Lisa? I had the opposite experience. I usually have a harder time freeing my mind completely to imagine something so every time I try to I still basically put together pieces of things that I was familiar with mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah I actually remember that um happened with me <laughs> last time yeah and that can happen um but it's a place to start though right so if it helps to put something familiar in there um give it a try, like say you're seeing something familiar like an old house, um, change the color of it, you know, start experimenting with that, make the grass, that green grass, make it blue, assuming it wasn't blue, <laughs> um, change the colors of things. Um, so start with the familiar then. I think that's a, um, I kind of like that idea actually for um, somebody that um, needs a little a bit more time working on that. It's a, I think that'd be great for everyone to try. Um, is to just change something. And I love that, make the fruit as big as your head. Um, you know, kind of like a Disneyland scene, you know, where things are just not always what they seem. 
Um, so, so good job for finding a workaround. Um, and in, that's, you know, you're stretching a little bit, you know, what's easy. So um, try to do things that are challenging as you're working on visualizing, you'll, you'll just hone your skills even more. And then when you're doing mind body and visualization exercises, it'll just be that much easier. Uh, we use visualization a lot in hypnotherapy. So um, practicing that, giving, being patient though with yourself as you learn a new skill is super important. You'll get better at it um, and it'll get easier. And then you can use it to your advantage when you're needing to calm yourself down and to go to a quiet, special place. Maybe that place where the fruits are as big as your head is super relaxing. <laughs> so I want to go there. So if you go there and it feels really relaxing, that's something you can do. And as you get faster and faster and faster, maybe you only have a few minutes, maybe you're about to go um, give a presentation and you want to relax yourself da um, down and um, you have a special place you visit. That helps you do that. People use that all the time. So really good. Yeah. So I'd like you to uh, now just one last exercise. Um, what I'd love you to do, and I'm going to help you bring your focus, your concentration and focus um, down to a point. So all part of the process. So what I'd love you to do is go ahead, close your eyes again. I'm gonna do one more exercise. All right. Now, what I'd love you to do is imagine going into a house, could be any house. So it's your house, an imaginary house. Now this house has a large skylight, very large skylight, yes. Roll your eyes up into your forehead, keeping them closed, but they are rolling up. They're rolling up into the mind's eye. Now look up through the skylight, look up. It's nighttime. See a big, bright full moon. See the stars very, very gently. Tap on your forehead up where you're looking. Yeah, up where you're looking. Mind body connection, mind body. Little tap, tap. Good. And keep looking. As you look up at the moon, your eyes are feeling much heavier. Just notice that for yourself. Test if they are. It's very normal and natural for them to feel. And then just relax, relax your hand down. Notice that just the process of looking up through your mind's eye, the eyes feel heavier. They might even have a lockdown feeling. It's a pleasant feeling. It's a pleasant, heavy feeling, a relaxed feeling. You can even try to open them if you want. And you might even be able to. It's just a lot of work. So you might not want to, you might just want to stay very relaxed. That's good. See the moon, see the stars, notice the heavy feeling in the eyes. Good, now stop doing that. Just come on back. You're gonna let it go. Open the eyes, just gently come on back. Especially if you have lights on in the room, very gently come on back. Yeah, now that's a different experience too. If anybody wanna share how that experience felt or nod the heads if that was okay, you kinda like that? Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, so I that's- I really stick my eyeballs. Ah, you gotta unstick them, yes. I often get a lot of resistance at this point <laughs> from folks, especially if they do have any, um, you know, if they need some sleep. Um, that can, that can be a, uh, they might even say, I don't want to, it's called, I don't want to, it's too hard. Don't want to open them. They're just really relaxed. Um, yeah. So it's a good one. It's a good one. So those are things you can practice doing. You can also practice looking at an object, uh, even your own thumb, uh, a beautiful plant you might have, study it, close your eyes, see it, open your eyes, study it. Notice the details, trace it in your mind's eye. Just as if you were to get a sketch pad and trace it, do it in your mind's eye. That'll help build visualization too. All right, really good. Good job, nice work. 
And um, what I just love is that uh, Brenda's got a skylight right there. <laughs> so um, <laughs> that was really nice to have that actual image. <laughs> All right, good job. Any questions? I wanna pause for a moment. Are there any questions about visualizing? Anything you've always kind of wanted to ask or were curious about? Yeah. What what you just described, like picturing an object, closing your eyes, is yeah. that a relaxation type of visualization? Hmm. Or are they all <laughs> fall? Or un, like, is that like if, if I was falling asleep maybe or do something, if I was like panicking, you know, is that like a guy like to kind of bring you back down? So uh, that depends. Uh, so it could be for you. Um, definitely, it could be. Uh, give it a try and see what happens, see how you feel. So um, oftentimes, uh, asking people go to go to a place where they feel very relaxed is a visualization and relaxation technique. So um, what I was describing that last little piece, Melissa, is yeah. more a skill building exercise. Okay, so you're practicing so, learning to visualize. Like it's a, like it's almost makes it a little easier practicing until you can build up. Yes. Yeah. Like yeah. a build up. Exactly. So all of these are kind of like practicing build up exercises, but yes, visualization is a relaxation technique and can be used to relax yourself if you're feeling panicky um, and, and feeling like you need to calm down. This can be very helpful. Uh, now, there may be some work involved as far as what's healing for you, what imagery right. works for you. That's why I always check in, you know, if you don't like water, don't go there. So a lot right. of protocols involve water and some people have bad experiences with water. So that's, the, and that's the part where, you know, when you're working on an individual basis, you're, you're learning that, is this okay? Right, Everything's exactly. Right. Yeah. Right, because if you had like a near drowning experience, your water wouldn't be your relaxation point, I would imagine. Yes, yes, <laughs> perhaps not. Um, and you never can assume um, because I had right. a client that exactly had that um, uh, near drowning experience, but still loved water. Go figure. Loves it. I'm impressed. Yeah, Good I was too. I was too, um, just because it is a little unusual. But that's why we always check in and and um, find out, you know, what works for you. So play around with it and find out, like, if you have a special place or like even a real place, a vacation place, like a lot of people do. Um, I do a lot of work with visualization in other fields to uh, market research for, for years. We've used visualization. And um, I can tell you 90% plus, you know, closer to even 99%, but I'll say 90% plus go to the beach, at least in America, yeah, in the U.S., uh, you go to Germany, they go to the forest, uh, typically, uh, the, 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 the forest. Um, but 90% of people go to the water, um, and there's some theories that it's a return to subconscious, return to the womb, uh, where you're sense. in a nice big suck of water. <laughs> so um, that's some of the theory behind it. So water is typically uh, very relaxing, but not for everyone. Um, I have one client that the sound of the ocean aggravates her. Uh, most people are relaxed with Sound of the Ocean that I've met. This person um, finds it and the continuous repetitive sounds, anxiety producing. So that's why you got to find out what works for you. That's the best. Yeah, really great question though. So um, I'm going to check in with you all. Um, I I'd like to pose um, that we do a relaxation session where you get to experience imagery. So now you've done some training. Um, so now I'd love for you to experience imagery. It's just a gentle relaxation exercise. Um, that's all we're doing. We're not doing any therapy here or anything like that. Um, we're just doing a relaxation exercise just for some general nice feel good, kind of like a mind massage. It will involve this kind of imagery. Um, and so let me know if this is okay with you because I'm good at modifying and adjusting things and throwing other things in, you're also good at it too. So if there's anything for some reason that you hear that, you know, that doesn't really fit for me. I think I'm gonna change it, do it. Your subconscious mind is powerful. You'll filter out what you don't need. Um, just like you do in daily life. You'll filter out what doesn't work for you. And then things that do, you'll resonate with. Here's the general imagery um, that we're going to do to, to again, you know, learn to visualize, kind of get used to it and experience it is floating. 
floating, floating down to earth. And you're going to be floating from the sky on a high place. Um, and we are floating on a feather. Fo floating on a feather down and down and down and down, down to the ground. Is that okay with everyone? If anyone isn't, tell me and I'll, I'll, um, I'll figure something else out um, for you. We'll work on it. Okay, I'm seeing lots of nods and um, a nice thumbs up from Aaron. Okay, cool. All right, here are the affirmations that um, are general around worth and appreciation because love and appreciation, self-worth, even gratitude, resilience, those are all really good um, relaxation uh, affirmations. They help us relax, they feel good, they send off those endorphins and they change our physiology. They help move us um, from fight or flight to the relaxed state. So physiologically, that's what happens um, during any mind-body exercise. Uh, you know, if it's something you've been practicing or getting into that relaxed state, prayer, mindfulness, hypnotherapy, uh, breathing, they all get you to that same state where you're really relaxed. So that's what we're just doing here together. So these help having those feelings we have noticed bring on that relaxed state. So I'm going to go ahead and read these briefly. I think we're doing pretty good on time. So we'll have time to do a nice, well, I would say it'll be like seven to 10 minutes, um, perhaps more of relaxing. Is that all right with everyone? Okay. Okay. All right. Here are the affirmations. And I'm also um, taking requests. So if there's anything that you'd like me to say that you'd like to add in, let's do it. Um, otherwise, here's what I've got for you. Um, these are the affirmations you'll hear after we do the floating imagery. So I'm going to tell them to you now um, because this is part of participating. This is part of the collaboration. Um, so here's what you'll hear when we're in, when we do the exercise. You are worthy. You love yourself. You appreciate yourself. You approve of yourself more now. Every day, in every way, you are healthier, stronger, and more resilient. God, the divine, the universe, higher self, spirit. This is where I need you to fill that in, wherever that is for you. I will say many of them, but you fill in the one that fits, okay? Even if I don't say it, um, you can come up with your own. So that, um, the God divine and so on supports you in achieving your goals. All right. How, how are those feeling to everyone? Okay. All right. Good, good, good. Okay. And remembering, um, you can change them. You might, you might add some on the fly. It's all good. It's okay. And I'll add any that you wish you have any ready. Um, I'm happy to add any that you want. Um, all right. Imagery follows that more imagery, always more imagery. After you hear affirmations, you'll hear, hear more imagery. So that first feather part is to get you into the relaxed state. Um, so that's kind of the beauty of that. So it's a bit of a tool like um, Melissa, I think you were talking about. So it's kind of like, like that warm up. So your mind, you want to really open that channel from the tip of the iceberg down to the subconscious. That's what's happening. That's what's happening with the um, feather exercise. You're opening, you're opening up so you can really hear and um, absorb these healing messages and imagery. The imagery is you running a mental movie in your head. So this is, um, you'll do this part, I'll guide you. Uh, so this is going to be going out into the future where you see yourself in a moment where you're feeling these feelings of love, and appreciation, again, add any others you want. You're feeling love and appreciation for yourself. See yourself in that moment. Pick, a, pick a, uh, an imagery that you can see. Um, see yourself in that moment, feeling love and appreciation for yourself. See your strong, healthy body. See a strong, healthy body. Uh, perhaps you'll see yourself doing an activity you enjoy with loved ones or on your own or you're in a favorite place, you know, a cabin in the woods, whatever it is, your favorite chair at home. 
uh, anything like that. And I'll ask you to fill in all the details. Your subconscious mind will fill that all in for you. Colors, sounds, smells, very powerful. Let all of that fill in. That's what I mean by fill in all the details. And then I'm going to give you some time just to be there. Um, that's really a transformative time. Um, that's when a lot of healing spiritually, physically, emotionally happens because you're putting out there what you want to achieve. And your subconscious mind, for, for those who might remember this from other sessions, um, your subconscious mind believes what you tell it and believes what you show it. It thinks it's real. There's no past. There's no future. Only now the subconscious mind doesn't understand anything but the present. So you're showing it, you healthy, happy, appreciative. It's like, oh, okay, this is what we're doing. This is what we are. Let's go. And it'll change your physiology. It changes your behaviors and how you move through the world. It's really powerful. You, um, it's the law of attraction, the law of manifestation. You tend to get what you put out there. You tend to attract what you put out into the world. So that's why this is, it's important. It's important stuff. Okay. Are we ready to experience just a relaxation? Ready? Okay, good. Do whatever you want to do to get comfy. Seeing some earphones, earbuds. Feel free to dim lights if you wish. Uh, you don't have to. It's up to you. This is your time. And I'm just going to get um, my notes in front of me while you're making those last little adjustments. Okay. Nice, all right. Okay, it's always helpful to take some nice deep diaphragmatic breaths. All I mean from that is to, um, is to uh, feel the belly rise and fall. That's a diaphragmatic breath when you're breathing from the belly and not breathing from up high. Um, so your breathing, you know, starts low in the belly and then goes up into the lungs and the chest, that kind of breathing. Do a few of those. Nice deep breath in through the nose. That's how we do it with hypnotherapy. Through the nose, hold for pause, and then exhale very gently. This is really good for you to do any time of the day that you need to calm yourself. Even just three breaths. Another one, whenever you're ready, inhale through the nose. Pause a little bit. Exhale through a slightly open mouth. Let the jaw drop just a little bit. Enough that your teeth are not touching. That's all you need to do. And a third deep breath. Good. Now you know you can relax even more, perhaps even more than you've ever been before. You now imagine yourself floating on a light feather. Floating on a light feather. Maybe your feather is white as snow. Maybe it's blue or gold. Notice the feather. Imagine yourself floating on a light feather high in the sky. High over a serene and, and peaceful and sacred place. The feather slowly floats down to earth. Below. And you float down with it going deeper into this relaxed state, as deep as you wish, it's up to you. That's right, floating. I'm going to count from seven down to one. And as I do, imagine the feather slowly descending and you with it going deeper and deeper into relaxation. 
seven. The feather slowly floats down to earth below. It drifts a little this way and that way as it slowly descends and you with it, going deeper and deeper into relaxation. Six, floating, drifting, closer to the earth below. Five, deeper, deeper down, down. Rays of sunlight pass through the white clouds and you feel their warmth on your face and limbs. And it feels so good as you drift peacefully down. Four deeper, sliding back and forth on the gentle breeze, taking away all stress and tension. Moving inward now, you feel relaxed and very serene. And you can begin to see your special place below. Three, down, 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 deeper, relaxed. Feeling more relaxed as you float down, down. Two and down, down and deeper relaxed. That's right. Any sounds or sensations you're aware of just take you deeper into this relaxed state. They're part of it. They help you. See below a special healing place, a special healing space the perfect place from which to begin your journey of self-transformation. Good, and at once you are in your special place, allowing yourself to be called to the perfect spot. Be there now. One. One. One, as you look about your environment, perhaps listening to the sound of the warm light breeze, or perhaps the sound of moving water not far distant, a feeling of serenity begins to emanate from the center of your chest. A deep serenity from your beautiful chest tranquility, contentment, and deep peace pervade and suffuse your entire being, infusing and enveloping every cell, fiber, and tissue of your body and your mind and spirit. Feel this deep sense of peace and calm Relaxing your entire being. Be in your special place for a moment while I am quiet. Good, very good. What you are about to hear is the truth about you. You are worthy. You love yourself. You appreciate yourself. You approve of yourself more now. Every day in every way, you are healthier, stronger, and more resilient. 
God, the divine, universal consciousness, higher self, spirit, and so on, supports you in achieving your goals. You are worthy. You love yourself. You appreciate yourself. You approve of yourself more now. Every day in every way, you are healthier, stronger, and more resilient. God, the divine, the universe, higher self, spirit supports you in achieving your goals. You are worthy. You love yourself. You appreciate yourself. You approve of yourself more now. Every day in every way, you are healthier, stronger, and more resilient. God, the divine, the universe, universe, universal consciousness, higher self, spirit, supports you in achieving your goals. Now, in your own mind, follow along and repeat after me in your own mind. I am worthy. I love myself. I appreciate myself. I approve of myself more now. Every day in every way, I am healthier, stronger, and more resilient. God, the divine, the universe, universal consciousness, higher self, spirit supports me. That's right, it does. Now, run a mental movie in your head. Imagine, sense and feel that you are somewhere out into the future. See yourself in a moment where you are feeling love and appreciation for yourself and your strong, healthy body. Perhaps you're doing an activity that you enjoy. Perhaps you're with loved ones in a favorite place, a vacation spot a quiet place at home. That's right. Now fill in all the details. Bring in the colors. Fill yourself up with the sensations of love and appreciation for yourself and your strong, healthy body. That's right. Fill in all the details, make it vivid and rich and real for yourself. Do this now for a moment while I am quiet.
Good. Very good. Nice. Really good work. All right. In a moment, I'm going to help you to come back to that aware state, bringing you out of this natural relaxed state. I'm going to count from one up to five. And on five, eyes open, feeling fully alert. One, slowly, calmly, easily, and gently returning to your full awareness once again. Two, every muscle and nerve in your body feels loose, limp, and relaxed. You feel wonderfully good. Three, from head to toe, you're feeling perfect in every way. Mentally perfect, emotionally perfect, physically calm, and very serene. All right, four, eyes begin to feel sparkling clear as if your face were bathed in cool spring water. And five, eyes open, coming on back into the room. You can wiggle your fingers and toes and maybe even stomp your feet on the ground. Want to make sure you're fully grounded out of that naturally relaxed state. Uh, fully grounded back into the present moment. All right. How was that experience? Good. Okay. All right. All right. Any my questions dog, about it? Oh, my dog ahead. started barking in the middle of it. So annoying. <laughs> <laughs> but it was pretty easy to go back to the feeling. So that was really Nice. Yes, you hit on a great thing. So the more you practice and build a skill, you can go in and out, in and out very quickly. Um, and that's actually a really good skill to, ha uh, skill to have because life happens. Um, and also we don't always have a lot of time. Now at night before bed, maybe we do have some time and we can fully immerse and take a lot more time with visualizing. Maybe you only have three minutes. Did you know you can relax yourself in three minutes or less? <laughs> you really can. You really can. Um, just breathing is, is very helpful. Even just a few breaths, however long that takes. Uh, so that's a good point. Yeah. Any questions anybody have or, um, you know, any concerns that you'd like to get some answers to? I just wanted to say that I really felt the benefit of the priming that we did at the beginning of practicing the few visualizations. I feel like I visualized way better <laughs> during the relaxation than I would have if um, we wouldn't have done that. So, Excellent, you. Sarah. Right on. That's terrific. Wonderful. Wonderful. Okay. There's some lovely chats coming up too. Thank you. And uh, wow, everyone looked so relaxed. So that's what I'm kind of looking at too. And I noticed, yeah, there's some distractions that happened, but I noticed people went right back in. Um, and see, that's lovely. That's the power of your own mind. You're all really good at this. And you all are experts already um, because you all do it in the morning upon waking um, and before sleep when you go to bed. You are in the same state um, when you go into that relaxed state, your brain waves are in that um, bottom of alpha, top of theta waves. Um, so you're in that brain wave already. Your body already knows how to do this. It's already a natural thing you do at least twice a day. So it's, it's, it's nothing foreign. Um, you're just practicing. And, and Sarah, as you notice, that's a great call out. The more you um, do those little priming exercises, the easier it is for sure. Yeah, really good. Yeah. Any other questions? And it doesn't have to be just right now. If something bubbles up with you, I'm here for you. Um, I, I would love any questions or um, any curiosities about it that you didn't feel got answered here or might come up for you later. Um, that anytime, reach out. It's, it's totally fine. I'd love to do that anytime. Yeah. Yeah. I do free consults um, all the time, uh, 20 minute free consults. So those are always available and, and, for you guys, gosh, you know, anytime. <laughs> so please reach out. Yeah. Thank All you. Right. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank you for participating. And I don't always see the chats. Um, they sometimes go by me too quickly because I'm focusing. <laughs> so um, if I missed a chat or two, um, let me know if that, I don't know if there's chats, if there's questions in there, sometimes we can save them 
and then I can answer them later. Um, I just took a quick look. Sorry about my big finger. Um, yeah. So, Audrey, yeah. Lisa, Lisa um, has a question actually. Lisa, go ahead. Oh, yeah. It's winding back to um, early in the discussion. You talked about healing and you said it's not curing. It's, and you put it some kind of way and I didn't get it. Can oh, you? Oh, sure. Uh, remember <laughs> yeah so I'm I'm pretty sure I didn't say cure um but I love that you brought that up because it's actually something we're really careful about um at least a, a hypnotherapist with my training never promise a cure we never say that I think what you might be referring to is I was talking about healing um uh, mentally spiritually physically it's always in addition to whatever you're doing with your physician so I always uh, was it that piece about it? No. No, you you said something along the line of it's not curing, but it's getting you to, you know, a calmer place or something like that. I, I don't remember exactly. Yeah. Hmm. Uh, <laughs> Is that something you have written? It was something that you... Uh -huh say okay and my, was it about the physiology fight or flight going to a relaxed state um you might think of it later lisa oh, oh recording. aaron yeah. okay the recording yep. yeah yeah we did do that <laughs> we did do that yeah i'm sorry i just it's not um i'm not immediately coming to mind what that was so but now you really got me curious so uh, <laughs> So now you have to listen to the recording, Lisa. <laughs> was it something to do with when you're in that relaxed state, it allows your body to renew or something like that? Or, or I don't know. Well, yes, well, something along that line. But it was before she got to the relaxed state. It was more when it was just really early on when you were talking about visualizing versus imagining. Oh, yeah. Visualizing versus imagining. So when we were doing those, those are different. So I talked about that. Right. I'll, I'll get it from the recording. I'll, I'll watch yeah. the okay. YouTube. Yeah. And you had the good um, idea of, of bringing in real things and then adding, embellishing them as another exercise. Um, so that was helpful too. Yeah. Well, thank you, Audrey. That was amazing. Thank you, Audrey. Oh, and thank to, you. You're welcome. And to agree with Lisa, your voice is magic. So, <laughs> oh, so sweet. Thank I you. I think we recorded it correctly, and we'll be able to put this on YouTube, so you will be able to hear her. Erin's got her double fingers crossed. <laughs> um, you'll be able to hear that again. So, yeah, yeah. Thank you so much. Oh, you are welcome. Thank you so much. Thank you, Erin. And thank you, Allie, uh, for yeah. hosting this. And thank you. Me. And our third part of this series, self-hypnosis, will be next month, April, do you know the date off the top of your head? Sixth, April 6th. So mark that on your calendar. We hope to see you all there. Yeah, that'd be great. Thank you. Have a wonderful evening. Good night, Good night everybody. All right, Good night. bye.